come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the super nerd edition of the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. That's kind of is. Yeah. That's being generous. It is. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, we're going. We're going way down. I imagine we're going to talk a lot about film editing on this episode. <laughs> You're listening to a movie review podcast, which uh, you can find wherever great podcasts are found. Give only us only great ones. That's right. Only the great, <laughs> great ones. ones. Give us a like, a star there's rating. There's only good things on YouTube, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, there's definitely not a whole cesspool of shit yeah. on YouTube. <laughs> but also we just great watched podcast. a cat to- TikTok video that was probably on YouTube at some point. Let's so. review yeah, that. Yeah, but it started on TikTok. That video? <laughs> yeah, but yeah. you know, everybody catches up with that shit on YouTube. Yeah. Compilation of TikTok videos. Yeah. Well, do us a favor. Even if you found us on YouTube, give us hit that little thumbs up button or uh, write us a review. Give us a comment uh, or a star rating because all that stuff helps us uh, become the fastest growing movie review podcast in the world. That's us. I feel like yeah. that should have echoed like world, world, world. world. Well, you can do that. Can should do I try it, it again? No. Do it again. No, no. In the world. World, world, world. There we go. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't work if the voice echoing is is, is different. Is different. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You could you could put some work into this and make it, make it echo and post, Colin. It, yeah. That's up to you. Well, uh, I would do it. Well, so you're probably wondering who these voices are, these internet radio superstars you're listening to. Well, I'll tell you. Well, actually, they're going to tell you. <laughs> Holly. <laughs> Michaela. Sean. And I'm Colin. Way too long. <laughs> and tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... Sean. Sean. What did long, we watch tonight? breathy. <laughs> Sean. Can you hear the eye rolls, listener? Uh, uh. I can feel them. <laughs> As they stare at me. Uh, we watched uh, 1981's Halloween 2. Did we? We did. A version of it. We watched oh. the TV version okay. of Halloween 2. Why would you do that, Sean? Why, <laughs> wouldn't, why wouldn't you just watch Talent's Halloween 2? Talent's getting right to it, Now, right? because... A few reasons. Uh, Halloween 2, the TV cut, is the first Halloween movie that I ever saw. Mine too. So that is, that, that's the major reason I'm bringing it tonight, because I have an affinity for this version. Um, also, it's Halloween. I, I gotta bring a Halloween movie. Like, but it's we've just, already it's talked about me. Halloween. So we've what? talked like about three, Halloween three times. 6, Halloween Resurrection, Halloween 2018. And Halloween 3. And Halloween, and Halloween 3. And now we can add Halloween 2 to the mix. <gasps> All right. Well, we're, now we're going to have to come up with this new is, things to this say. This is a for me pick. <laughs> oh, we know. We know. <laughs> because this is usually um, I this is usually a once a year watch for me. The TV cut specifically? Yes. Okay. Because in the viewing of the Halloween movies, because I can't watch Halloween anymore. I know it too well. Like at a certain point, I I got to give it a break. So I move on to the other various versions and other shit of these. So Halloween two uh, and Halloween two the TV cut have become yearly viewings for me. Mm. I, w- I mean, you know, I will say before we get angry um, <laughs> that I had never seen this version. So yeah, I'll give you either. that. Yeah, I will give you that. Yeah, I've never seen it. And that's what I figured. Yeah. And that's the other reason um, because it was enough that it was included on the Shout Factory Halloween collection. Well, it's for the nostalgia. Okay, right. so let me give you because I was actually there. Uh, <laughs> Here we go. Premiere. Guys, let's snuggle in for All Colin's right. story Ooh, time. Right. Up. Get Light your the drink. Light the fire. So Put your me, feet let up. Me, let me uh, use <laughs> the little take, way take back, back. We'll take it back. Set, okay. set the scene, Colin. So back in Ooh, the day. Turn the lights down. Well, there was still pay TV. There was HBO, at least. There might have been Showtime. Maybe Cinemax was there. Whatever. So... Uh, and how old were you at the time, Uncle Tom? This would have been okay. So we're talking uh, eighty-five, somewhere between eighty-five and eighty-seven. I was thinking, a, I was a babe. Okay, <laughs> so I was either not non-existent or very little. Well, the original <laughs> Halloween, John Carpenter's Halloween, yes, uh, played on NBC mm-hmm. on a major studio on a major network, right? 
Halloween 2 was a part of a thing called the Universal Pictures Debut Network. Ooh. I remember this because Exciting. the version that I saw, which Ooh. I am going to put this on you on our Facebook page because I found it, the original promo that I saw that led into this movie Fantastic. was part of the Universal Pictures Debut Network. And what I it was old promos. was a package of 33 movies that Universal Pictures sold to television stations across the country in syndication mm-hmm. where they had all these movies that they basically dumped out to syndication. But what made them uh, unique is that some fucking editor, I did my research, I could not find who this person was, if it's just one person or what. But Universal took it upon themselves to completely recut the movie for television. They wouldn't just, now you would just basically, I mean, now they show basically the entire movie on TV. They just obscure nudity and gore. Yes. Uh, But back then... They had to edit that stuff out. And since this movie, well, what's the running time on the theatrical cut of Halloween uh, 2? 92 minutes. They had to oh, fill... The theatrical cut is 93, the TV cut is 92. Okay, so they had to fill a 95-minute uh, programming schedule because I think it was like 10 minutes of commercials and the remaining 20 minutes went to the TV station, 10 minutes went to Universal Studios. Right. The barter, barter spots. Right, yes, barter there. spots right. and all that, yes. Um, I still deal with this shit today. Yeah. But they had to cut so much out of this movie because this was a splatter film. Not yes. even a slasher film. No. A splatter film. Explicitly gory. Well, maybe we should, we, should, we should find out why. Why? So the first Halloween movie is a relatively restrained, uh, in, as far as violence and gore goes. Yes, yes. very. Right? It is. But Halloween 2 is explicitly gory. It has lots of nudity. Well, I don't know. Why, Colin? Lots, but... Well, I'm asking you. You're, this is your movie. Because we've entered the sweet spot. Uh, because so much has changed between 1978 and 1981. In 1981, we're getting into that sweet spot of like, um, like we talked about, that 1981, 1982 slasher um, era that was so quickly, so quickly came and so quickly went away, um, where movies kind of uh, took their inspiration from Halloween, but then amped it up a lot. So you get a lot, at this time, you get a lot more gore, you get a lot more nudity. In your horror and slasher films, aren't at this we time. already on our second Friday the Thirteenth at this point? Yep, same, same year. Yep, mm-hmm. yep. So, so, the, so that's the new bar, right? The ante has been upped. We have supersized horror, mm-hmm. right? Exactly. So yeah. there, it's more gratuitous at this right. point in many aspects. So I mean, and that's what this movie, um, according to John Carpenter, uh, had to be. Yeah, because. Well, there's also like uh, the reason that this uh, era kind of faded out real quick and that uh, the censors went after these movies Mm. was, I think, was I listening to something today? Maybe it was an interview they were talking about My Bloody Valentine. Like right around this time, John Lennon was shot. Yeah. And somehow the uh the the blowback about that, you know, the MPAA said like we got to cut violence out of movies, all these super violent gory movies. You know there was actually uh, a pair of murders called the Halloween 2 murders. I read about that today. I yeah, did not this know that now before. happened like a year maybe 1983 or something like that. Somebody stabbed so. an elderly couple 48 times yeah. and claimed that they did it because they saw Halloween, Halloween two. 2. Now, the jury, I think, uh, the judge uh, ultimately was like, well, the guy was on mushrooms and, you know, something at the yes. time they did it, so we can't hold all movies accountable for, you know. But this is where, I guess, this whole idea that, like, movies cause people to do violent things kind of right. comes from, and then Hollywood reacts by, like, we're going to just, uh, you know, expunge all the, the right. violence and gore from the Very movies. reactionary. Yeah, but this took place right before that. Yes. <laughs> yes, it did. When it's like, we got Tom Savini on one side doing hideously gory stuff in the Friday the 13th and Prowler movies yes. and all this when other stuff. When was the burning? That was 81. I believe okay. that was the same yeah, year. 81, same year, 82. Yeah. I think it was 81. We're doing some In that sweet spot, like you're shit. talking about. Yeah, some gruesome shit. So Rick Rosenthal is the director of Halloween 2. Yes. Because um, John Carpenter is off prepping the thing, right? Or he was filming the thing around the same time, mm. something like that. Mm-hmm. And so John Carpenter says, he looks at the finished movie and he's like, you got to be competitive, you know, like, the, yes, you got to be bar right. has changed. Yeah, well, it's changed since we've gotten to this point. So we need to add a few more things in this. We need to up the kills, up the nudity. So did John Carpenter uh, reshoot um, the gore scenes in this movie? 
Yes. The only reason I ask this is because this is the point of contention. There's a scene at the very end of the... I'm sorry, we're going to spoil this, but you have seen Halloween 2. I would hope so. Yep. At this point in your life. Right. Uh, multiple have seen, times. Have you seen the TV cut? That is the question for tonight. Well, even, we'll get to that. Well, before that, uh, there's a scene toward the end of the movie where uh, the, the Michael Myers breaks into a, a the hospital and there's a marshal there. And in the theatrical cut, it's very gory. Basically, uh, the marshal mm. bends down to uh, check his pulse. And Michael Myers sits up, turns and flips him over, and graphically cuts his throat. Yes, mm-hmm. indeed. In the TV version, it uses an alternate uh, take. Right. And in this, Michael Myers hoists the guy up, and it appears that possibly Dr. Loomis mm-hmm. may have fired a shot. So in that version... Michael Myers used uh, the Marshall as a human shield. You say possibly. I say 100% definitely. It's there. There's a bullet the wound The TV in version him. cuts the gunshot out. Cuts so, the gunshot yeah. out so we don't implicate uh, Loomis at any point. But there is a gunshot or a, a gunshot wound, and there's a little, a very small puff of smoke, mm-hmm. which you can barely see before it goes away. But it's there. So in that version, Loomis accidentally shoots the Marshall trying to shoot Michael. So it's one of those things where you wonder if they were just covering themselves because they knew they had to make a less bloody version of it for an eventual television broadcast, or was the throat slitting part of amping up, you know, the the reshoots to amp up the gore quotient in the movie. (sighs) The TV version uses the actual original shot version. It's weird because it all seems like if they had to recreate it to do it again, they did very well. Um, because they would have had to gone back like weeks later to reshoot that. Well, they were probably putting this movie together while they're making it. Yeah, I probably. Assume. I don't know, but uh, that's quite possible. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway, I guess that brings us to the topic at hand. Uh, eventually, this movie. Oh, there's the other uh, thing about uh, the making of Halloween 2. There are a couple of flashback scenes that happen in this where we get to meet <laughs> young Michael Myers. What'd you guys think of that voiceover in those flashback scenes? Awful. Uh, <laughs> uh, unconvincing. Right? It didn't sound like a, a young boy was doing the no, voiceover. Uh, no, it sounded like a young <laughs> girl. This is, this is uh, d- Michael, don't hurt me. I'm, yeah. I'm your sister. Well, it's supposed to be a young girl. It's supposed I, to be Jamie it's not, no, it sound, no, I know. It sounded like an adult pretending to be right. a young yeah, child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it sounded I, um, like. I'm, I'm just going to say this may or may not be targeted at an upcoming Halloween movie as well. I'm not a fan of revisionist history in my mm. horror movies. I don't like going back and being like, oh, I know we never mentioned this before, but it did happen. Like, right. you know, I hate that. I am not as well. This is the other reason I brought this is because if you've been paying attention to uh, horror news as of late, um, they've been doing a lot of casting and they are currently shooting uh, the sequel to the 2018 Halloween. Halloween Kills is currently being shot right now. And they are bringing back Nancy Stevens, the nurse from this movie and the mm-hmm. first movie. Uh, Charles the, Cyphers. Yeah, the nurse that transports Michael right. Myers. Charles is. Cyphers is coming yeah. back. Sheriff Brackett. Sheriff, yeah. uh, Sheriff Brackett. Which, uh, I really don't want to get off on this, but w- our biggest complaint, uh, one of, the, of our biggest complaints about Halloween 2018 was why Sheriff Brackett was not in that when they were basically wrote in a cop character that was like, I've been here the whole time. Right. But now they're going to bring him back in? Bracket, but, come on. You know, come on. Um, so they're doing a lot of they're they're culling from the first uh, two movies a lot in their casting um, for this next movie. So I figured, and plus they're which doing is a all lot of, basically trying to expunge the memory of Halloween two, nineteen eighty one. It seems like by it, yeah. wiping by, it right by, out, wiping it right out by recreating it all because yeah. they're back at the hospital. They're back at Halloween. Well, that's what Memorial. I'm saying. Like this movie does leave such a long, like so much of the shit that happens in later Halloween movies mm-hmm. is because of this movie. Absolutely, it, is. it absolutely, <laughs> absolutely is. <laughs> that so much so that like the new ones have to go back and recreate all the little bits from right. this movie because, because this, they're like, well, now that doesn't exist, so right. we need the best parts of it. There's And we're, we're going to get the second... It's basically the second Halloween 2 to go back to the hospital. Mm-hmm. Because it's we the had, third. We got Rob Zombies. Rob Zombies. Well, well, we have Halloween 2. Yep. Yeah, and the uh, Rob, Rob Zombies, Zombies Halloween. Halloween so oh, this will be the I'm third. Sorry, yeah, that's what I meant. So, third. So we're, re- be the we're third remaking one. Halloween 2 again, basically. Again, yes, we yeah. are. If for, it's fucking for, stupid. For however little or... 
a lot is going to be in this new one. Right. They're going to be at the hospital. Well, and I, I'll talk to you guys more about this off mic later. But, <laughs> but like, just say now. But, well, I, I was thinking this weekend, I really got annoyed thinking about it because I know we brought it up a lot on our Halloween 2018 episode, sure. how much how much they were like, don't think about the other movies, but we're going to constantly reference the other movies. Right. They kept doing that movie. I thought, I was thinking the adult Laurie Strode in Halloween 2018 is the, is the exact same characterization we saw of Laurie Strode in Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. She goes down this dark path. Traumatic. She can't function. Yeah, 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 she yeah. is the like Rob yeah. Zombie already did it and maybe did it better. Like it I, like the Rob Zombie influence I see in Halloween 2018 right. is a lot. But it's so annoying that they're like, don't think about those other movies, right. but we're gonna reference no, them all that, the time. That's, that's I hate a, that. That's my one of my biggest problems with Halloween 2018 yeah. is just like it's using the influence of the movies of that all were made of before them. All of them. in this movie when it's when it's said before, it's just like, no, forget all those. I'm just like, how can we right. when you're when you won't shut up about it? <laughs> right. When you're constantly talking about it. The the two like jokey buddy cops, that's Halloween five. Yeah. Like like you're borrowing from literally every movie in the franchise and making it one big movie and then it's like, but don't right. think about those. So like, you don't want to think about it, but then it's just like that's yeah. all I can think about watching this. Right? Movie. Yeah. Like, ah, what are yeah. you doing? What's uh, but I what's the more I think about like it it, it like to Halloween twenty eighteen really is the grown up version of Laurie Strode and Rob Zombie's Halloween two. Like probably it's yeah. the exact same character. We've already seen it done. The, the movie. Ah. Whatever. Go, go, listen, go listen to our Halloween 2018. I know. Episode. Holly's sitting here going, I'm experiencing deja vu. Yeah. Like, you I'm like, I can't believe. do this again. We're, we're, we had this conversation this when we didn't have And I guess what, Holly? Forever. We're going to be talking about having this exact same conversation oh, when Halloween Kills oh, comes out because we're going to have to go like, to a fucking. I know. I was like, inevitably, this will happen again because yeah. Sean will pick the next one. It's it's going to hey, happen. They keep making them. I'm going to keep talking about them. All right. It's so, uh, not my fault. And people keep. It is your fault. That's not. You can make the choice. They, they could also make the choice, Holly. They could stop making you them. You can't control them. You can control your actions. <laughs> I, you know what? That's what I tell my child. God damn it. <laughs> I damn tell it. my child the same thing. Like, who can you control? Only yourself. Exactly. You're right. This is Sean. my fault. This is all my fault. Ugh. So, the TV ashamed. version of Halloween 2 <laughs> is a dramatically recut version of the feature film. Dramatically. Where, uh, do you know the, the minutes? Like, how much time they cut out? It's like 12 or 13 minutes. So, they cut 12 difference. or 13 minutes out of their uh, the theatrical cut, which was 92 minutes. And then theatrical they. Theatrical was 93. This is 92. And they reconstructed it. So, now they put. Alternate takes and uh, and new footage in yes and reused. They recycled several they shots. Did re- <laughs> they did and they made it <laughs> ninety three minutes. Okay, so uh, item the movie starts out with the opening credits out of order because uh, it should uh, start with the flashback. Right. This one starts with the credits. Uh, uh, how did that impact you, Holly? I mean, obviously the opening credits. I was like, okay, well we're just going right into this, and then. It was a little off. I got to say, Colin. Why so? It was a little off. Why so? Because they changed the, <laughs> I've been trick-or-treated to death tonight. It's like, is this some the, kind of the, joke? Yeah. The best line, one of the best lines best in the lines, movie. Best lines, you don't know what they, death they is. got rid of it. Yeah, they cut out sons of bitches. They cut out all of Loomis's best they lines. They do. Yeah. I shot him six times. Yeah, he's talking to Bracket. You don't know what that know, is. I don't know why <laughs> they did that. Yeah, because they move the scene that immediately follows the opening credits, which is the shape wandering around through the backyards the all that stuff. Which they is like put that a three great scene. Scenes yeah. later. Yeah. yeah, it's like yeah. iconic. Yeah, right. Yeah, so iconic. They redid it in Halloween right? 2018. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's all sorts of uh, different ham and all ha- ham and all. Ham and all. No. Oh, that's right. The ham is in this. The ham. The, yeah. There's all the. I mean, like it really is. I just wonder. And this is where we're talking about like how editing really does change or shape a yes. movie because and this is what is Pat- fascinating <laughs> about the TV cut of Halloween too. Patrick Lussier said it today in the Shockwaves podcast. Is like a cinematographer can make your movie look pretty, an editor can save your film. Which yeah, is very, very true. true. That's very true. Well, but this is what this is what we're or destroy having. It. Like you or would focus not, if between you, two monitors. If you, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, or make a shot. Completely. Well, that's because you've got uh, uh, a wide screen. I mean, the movie's composed for two thirty-five to one. Yeah, and, and we we're watching a four by three. three. So yeah, 
so there's new shots basically like one one uh shot is the half of the frame and the other shot is the other half of the I frame. I feel like Cut the back and in forth. between monitor was a panic shot which is like ah, I don't yeah know they what just to went do. right down in the middle of the frame. I don't know what to do with my hands. It's like it's yeah, like yeah. I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> right? yeah. to with my hands. What, what happens to this shot? Which one do I, I go to? The there's keyboard. nothing happening on either monitor. <laughs> was that an intern's first time? Like like they're like hey we're gonna let you uh handle right. the camera. He ran one. out of the room crying. Yeah, it's like oh god. I went to get dinner. What happened? I don't know. This the is. Shot. I mean, this is kind of amazing at this point in time that you know, that uh, that this would happen, where the movie that you watched on TV was not the version that you saw in the theater. Well, mm. uh, Universal uh, Debut Network famously give us the two night version of uh, David Lynch's Dune, which had oh. like oh, another God. hour. It's, Do you mean people tuned in after the first night? Yeah, yeah. it's the uh, <laughs> Alan Smith version. He took his name off oh, of it. Oh, because, oh, the oh, TV really? oh yeah. Oh. Nice. Of course. Mm. Of course. Mm. Gotta love an Alan Smithy doing. film. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, so, yeah. I like uh, a two-night event of any movie because, you know, like, <laughs> oh, that's just not going to be good. Yeah. <laughs> so how much, because, uh, Michaela, you said you you had not seen this no. before also. Okay, oh, because good. that's the thing. Like, most people would not come in contact with this version <laughs> no, ever they again. Contact. You do that like it's a disease. <laughs> yeah. Was this like, was, uh, a, I mean, the only reason it, it is included in the Shout Factory releases is because those guys are thorough and they're like, yes. you remember the original TV version of the thing. Yes, you remember, the first version you saw. Right, because when you were a kid, because this was how I experienced it, was I saw Halloween 2 before I saw Halloween 1. Mm-hmm. This was the version that I saw. It. And it was not until years later that I found out that Jimmy didn't survive. Right. And I was bummed because right. I'm like, I think that's a better ending that he survives. You think it's a better ending than Who's Surprised? You Personally? Know? Yeah. Okay. Well, just because... Now the, I judge you. Well, the theatrical <laughs> ending, knowing... See, again, this is the problem I, with, I with hate being aware of this the ending. stuff that's, that was excised. Yes. Oh, no, that's the thing. Because then like, you get to go like, well, it would have been better if they left that in there. It would have been better if they took this out I, and it was more like the theatrical right. cut. I feel like Jimmy being alive or dead is irrelevant. Like, it doesn't I matter think, either I way. I mean, that's... That's the thing. Right? Yeah. It doesn't matter either way. No, but it gives you this kind of, it's an upbeat ending where it's like, we survived. We made it. We made it. Which the version of when she dies is, uh, what does he die of a contusion (laughs) to the head? No, he dies of falling asleep at the wheel in the car. Well, (laughs) technically. But yeah, a concussion or something. (laughs) But I feel like, I feel like if Lori had had that reaction in the back of the ambulance to anyone else, it still would have been the same thing. If someone had just been like a paramedic had been talking to her just like are you okay she like breaks down crying he's like what's wrong what's wrong she says i made it i feel like that would have had the same impact mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. probably but, but that, there's you know, the idea that there's a i always because this is the thing that i took with me right i saw this version and then years later in 198 probably a couple years later 88 i saw halloween 4 and in my mind i always thought that Lori and jimmy were the parents of jamie the little girl oh, from yeah, yeah. like yeah, right. I seriously went into that movie thinking that yeah. because Which he survived. Which is not unproven. Yeah, it's not. You're not wrong you're for not thinking wrong. that. Yeah. Well, you are if you go by the theatrical film because he's dead. He died. Well, in true. The, That's yeah. very true. He does. What does he die? I think he's dead. He's laying on, he's that, dead? on the uh, horn. He could. Would, he could easily have just passed okay. out from a concussion because he fell into a puddle of blood. Yeah. From a nurse who had been drained of her blood. Mm-hmm. Was she? I, didn't, I missed that part. Yeah, what happened to Dr. Mixture and their selves? <laughs> uh, we don't know because it's not in this movie. Because apparently those deaths were too violent to be included. Yeah, but yeah, we can to, show uh, a completely charred corpse and that's, charred corpse. Yeah. that's totally fine. A giant puddle yeah. of blood. Yep. Yeah, because it's like, eh, it's a makeup thing. True. Yeah, we saw him burning. Cool. Yeah, it was pretty. Yeah, we saw it the burning for quite a minute. It wasn't a charred corpse. It was a like burning corpse. Well, that was the other thing I liked about this version. It includes a line of dialogue that Loomis has at that point when the he's like, you know, I the, don't like that. He's like, do you, is it him? Is it him? And Loomis I don't is know. Like, I don't know. <laughs> well, he does that. Uh, no, no, he doesn't, doesn't says do that. that. He, he doesn't, doesn't say that anything. The theatrical. No. Yeah. He doesn't say anything. And the uh, I also like that for whatever reason, which is inexplicable to me, the uh, the deputy pulling up and telling him that uh, they found two bodies in the house. One of them was Annie is also a completely different take. Mm-hmm. I know, that's two. where I'm like, I don't get what the fuck's going on behind the scenes at Universal here. Like e- they <laughs> reconstructed the movie. It's not like you took the theatrical cut and then and edited cut it down. It. It's like they it's remade like the movie they entirely. Remade it. They remade yeah. it in editing. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. They're like, well, I like this cut better. He I like delivers this, this, this line. That I li- right. I like this take better because his line delivery is different mm-hmm. because it's that line delivery. If one of them was Annie, 
Annie is way over the top yeah. in way this version over of it. Way over the top. First time I saw it, I laughed my ass off. Right? I'm like, holy shit, what is going on? Yeah. There were three. Hey. One of them was Annie. One like, of them was Annie. It's so, oh my God. <laughs> I'm like, why would you choose that over what you already had? It's it, like I said, inexplicable. I love it that they decided to do it because it makes this movie more of an anomaly, a weird thing, like an oddity. He had a heaving bosom when he said it. He did. He's yeah. like, <sighs> he had one. <sighs> he did. <laughs> well, here's I the other the thing that happened. I think before I saw the theatrical version of this, right? Because mm. I don't think I was old enough or I couldn't. You know, parents were No, it was whatever. a while before going from this one to that one. But somehow I was able to go to the library and check out <laughs> the book, or I bought oh, get Halloween 2, which Ooh. is by Jack Martin, who's a pen name for Dennis Etchison. Okay. Uh, horror fantasy. I don't know if he's like an editor or is a writer. He wrote some stuff. Stephen King speaks very highly of. But uh, well, that means nothing. He At wrote the novelization <laughs> <Right>? of uh, <laughs> several uh, films. But um, so he had access to the script, right? Right. So the novelization is based on the script. So in my mind, I saw the version on TV. I read the novelization, and then when I saw the theatrical film, it was like. Wow, there's a lot of this missing because I know these scenes where it feels like uh, they shot and wrote scenes that had a beginning, a middle, and an end. Mm. The TV version uses like the first half of the scene. Yes. And the theatrical version uses the half, the back half of the scene. <laughs> and you're like, what the fuck? It's just weird. The TV version does have a lot of connective tissue where it's like, you know, we're going to the, you know, he's wounded. So he may go to the house. Right. And they go to the house, which you don't get that kind of connective right. tissue the in the theatrical. The, that, yeah. uh, the biggest one probably is the fact that the uh, you know the hospital is dark because at some point Michael Myers cuts the power and so it goes on to the uh, the, the the emergency lights. Right, that's not in the theatrical no, version. It's just like all. why the fuck is this hospital like the most Very desolate, dark. darkest fucking hospital <laughs> that's ever existed anywhere? Right, is this legal to take care of your patients? Should mm -hmm. it be this dark? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's a it's a different different film. Certain cast members get more screen time. Yes, I'm looking at you, Jimmy. I Jimmy so. played by um, Lance Guest, who we would all know from not this show, but Jaws Revenge. Well, actually, no, didn't we watch? Well, yeah, you're right. <laughs> okay, so this is this movie actually has two connections to the Jaws universe. Oh, we got this one. Uh, well, you Lance got Lance Guest, Guest and. Jeffrey Kramer, the dentist who examines the oh. corpse that Michaela was oh, talking right, about. Right. Yeah. He's, yeah. He's, he's a uh, Hendrix, he's the Hendrix. deputy from the Jaws right. movies. He's, he's sure. also uh, has a nice part in a movie called Clue. Anybody? Clue? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I love Clue. That's right. He's the Clue's motorist great. that gets stranded and comes in and gets, yeah. Clue's great. Cool. Um, Lance Guest was, yeah, we said last Starfighter. Last Starfighter. Last yeah. Starfighter. Yeah. Which I, I believe we movie. covered on this show. We did. I think so. Wait, is he on the wall? I think that means For, he is on the wall. What's that? Like, right? Well, we didn't do Jaws the Revenge. We Revet. haven't done Jaws the oh, Revenge. Okay. Oh, you did Jaws 3D. Yeah, right? that's right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just, uh, just, just wait. For I Jaws was going to say, Revenge. now that you guys said it, <laughs> God damn it. Summer of sequels or spring of sequels, <laughs> winter of sequels. Yeah. <laughs> it is a freak show movie, though, because it is Year of sequels. one yeah. of the worst movies ever made. Wow. Sean's sequel picks. I'm really, I'm really getting taken down tonight. <laughs> I have a feeling that it's like, all right, Sean, we've had issues with you over the past two years. <laughs> We're going to bring him out tonight. And we need to talk about you. You, and your, and you poked the you. Colin bear with this you one. Did. You you really poked the Colin bear I, I with did. this I mean, one. We, me, and, uh, me and Colin have been having a uh, social media uh, uh, back and forth today uh, over this movie. Right. Uh, I've Our, been, I think I've been insulted by social media updates. Our group chat was interesting today. Yes, it was. Um, uh, but publicly, but he's taken it public. That's with, true. Uh, with social media updates. And you have so, a target. Yep. Um, I feel like I've, I've been accosted. Well, you have to defend yourself here on the Saturday Night Freak Show. I, I, for I picking am. the television version, because usually we do theatrical stuff. That's we right. Do. Sometimes we have had to watch TV movies. Sure. Sometimes it works out in our favor. Yeah, Strays. I'm not the only one, though. Strays, Strays, Strays was awesome. Strays Terror was Track. Awesome. But Terror this, Track was awesome. This is an anomaly because it's not a TV movie. It's a theatrical film that Sean's like, no, I want to. I don't want to watch the theatrical one. Let's bring the TV one. That so seems like a loophole to me. We're, we're, I think he found a loophole that He did works. find a loophole. Yeah. We're about halfway through this podcast, and we have talked about the TV version. At this point, do we switch over and actually start talking about Halloween 2, or is there more to talk I think, about, no, I think about the TV version? I think we mix it up as we go along. Yeah. Just keep talking about, 
keep talking about Halloween too. We mm-hmm. talk about. Yeah, we didn't Halloween. watch the theatrical version, so why would we talk about it? Mm-hmm. I mean, well, at some point, you just have to talk about the entity that is Halloween too. We they do, do share the so. same storyline, and there is mm-hmm. DNA in there. Yeah, yeah, obviously. So it seems like they took like the worst takes of Donald Pleasance in this movie, though. Like this version of the movie, though. Mm. Like. I love him, and I love that he like chews scenery. But in this movie, I was like, yeah. they picked the worst take, yeah, and they were like, that's what we're gonna use. I'll yeah. take the worst take of Donald Pleasance in a Halloween movie over uh, nothing at this point. I, I actually like watching this movie made me realize how much I miss like a Donald Pleasance I type presence in a really Halloween yeah. movie. Wish he, yeah, because yeah. yeah, when he left the series, my God, there was a big hole left in all. Well, that. it's kind of like yeah, because I, I experienced this with the Rambo movie. I just went and saw the and once you take Richard Crenna out of Rambo, yeah. like yeah. Rambo's over, right? Like I know Stallone's the big fucking deal, Michael Myers is the big deal, and Laurie Strode, but you really need like they that did other have that side alchemy, of it, yeah, you yeah. know that casting that yeah you need the donald pleasant's character Mm -hmm. the cassandra right the warning yeah the harbinger Mm -hmm. he's coming at it uh so basically the big conceit of halloween 2 was uh at the end of halloween 1 i mean halloween 1 is this you know spooky movie that ends with uh evil just kind of being this intangible thing he's yeah. you think it's this guy named michael myers the doctor fires six shots into him he goes over a balcony and the big kicker of the movie is that oh my god he somehow survived getting shot six times and he's gone ergo he's a ghost or a phantom or not human or it's just evil Right. So now you got to do Halloween 2. You got a, a Universal Studios and Dino De Laurentiis behind you at this right. point. They pick They're it up. Giving you all the money in, your, in the world you want. I think Donald Pleasance was actually on Saturday Night Live in order he to was. promote this movie. If you haven't gone and really? watched the Saturday Night Live oh. where Donald Pleasance hosted. No, I have not. I need to watch it. Great. Yeah, Go from, watch it. Was it was promoting this, right? Not the yes. first one. Because no, the first one two. became a hit over like a year. Uh, yes. That it played regionally across the United States. It became the most successful independent film of all time yes. until I think it was unseated by The Crying Game in the 90s. Mm. Um, so it wasn't a big hit all at once. No. But by the time they got to Halloween 2, this is the one with money. This yep. is the This the is the promotion. Studio. This is the money. Boom. This is Donald Pleasance hosting Saturday Night Live. Yeah. I love that. Go find the promos and all the shit on there for it because that's an amazing thing. Donald Pleasance hosted Saturday Night Live. When was the last time That's we had nuts. like a horror centric person? Jennifer Love Hewitt. Host her, is that the last time? When like they like actually Daniel had, Kaluuya didn't host Ever Get you, Out or you anything? you consider Jennifer Love Hewitt no, a horror only, person? No, only because she had Persona? Was she promoting? She, oh, I know what she did last Watson. summer. Uh, in the opening number, and they sang a musical number together, uh, him dressed as the fisherman. Gotcha, okay. From, I think I still know, because that's right. what it was for. Yeah. yeah, okay. Which is the last thing I remember, because I he came on, he's like, hello, everybody. Yeah. With, waving his hook around. Sure. So it was, yeah. I still know. <laughs> yeah. But it was, it's always a memory that stood with me, because I'm like, holy shit, this is going on. But that is the last big, that's that's are horror we, movie. Are you sure? I feel like there's uh, been some. There may have been then. something since then. And I would maybe be shocked so, if Jordan Peele or Daniel Kaluuya didn't host after Get they Out. They did not. They, Neither of them no, have been no, on. They, they, they don't know that they're a big deal when no. the movie comes out. It'd have to be a sequel. Jordan to Peele was a big deal already. Right, yeah, he was, especially Saturday in Island. comedy. Well, he was a big deal in comedy. Know, so right. why wouldn't he? But they be didn't know it was going to be a big right. hit. But no, but af- even afterwards, they yeah. probably should have. But that's what I'm saying. Even I after I the movie came out, yeah. yeah. And listener uh, uh, Brailler, if you do <laughs> remember anything besides that, let me know. But that's the last big one where it's just like Jennifer Love Hewitt specifically for I still know, and Muse Watson was there. In costume. Mm-hmm. All yes. right. So here we go. The sequel conceit to Halloween 2. Mm. The John Carpenter ah, and Deborah yes. Hill come up that with. That everyone hates. Well, or, who or, loses everyone? Or, or, uh, Deborah, or John Carpenter hates. Um, and then that they made us try and forget for uh, sequels, for the new sequels and everything going on. That's right. Because this actually, I don't know, either uh, gave this series something to spin off of for a lot of people hate 10, this 20 well. years. Or dug a hole right. is that it basically said that the reason that Michael Myers came back to Haddonfield to relive his crime in the first movie mm. was because he was also trying to get after his second sister, he had mm-hmm. two sisters, not just the other one. Mm-hmm. And Jamie or Laurie Strode is his sister. What do we think about this? I am of two thoughts of this. Okay. Um, 
in like a grander scale, it's kind of a weak premise because that means he's only targeting people he's related to. So why should I be afraid of him? Which is what the rest of the series went on. Right. At that point. Uh, the on the other hand, because well, he plows through everyone trying to get to them. Right, yeah. but he's but like as long as you stay out of his way, you're fine. But how do you know if you don't you know, know if you're like, in his way? Is if you thing. don't know Lori Strode, you're fine. Then this is you know. You don't live in Haddonfield, you're fine. <laughs> well, maybe not live in Haddonfield, but he killed what, like, what, f- six people or four people before he got to the he'll hospital? Kill, he'll kill randomly. Yeah, he right. kills yeah. whatever yeah. to get. Right, but he has a prime directive, goal. right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. you he's know. He's a Terminator. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. He's, but, but he's, like, he, yeah, yeah, he's on a trick, you know? He is. Yeah. But he killed, like, um, the two old people and then the three kids. Like, he killed several people before he got to her. Ha- however, in Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, I think the reveal of how she finds out that she's Michael Myers' sister is like the ultimate form of trauma and is like super devastating. In that movie, she uh, d- uh, Sam, they make Loomis into a real dick in that movie and yeah, he's all about the money. Yeah, he doesn't yeah, care about anything yeah, about selling books. Yeah. And um, he writes good. a second book in that movie and it, she buys his book and reads it and finds out in the book that she's related yeah. to Michael Myers. And then Which it's like an devastating. I like. Yeah. I like that idea. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like a I really like nothing good, else about that movie, but I like that idea. It's a really good way to like uh, like put trauma under a microscope right you know because yeah. even in that movie you see you're going to a therapist and like dealing with all yes. that and like and it was more dramatic than in this one yeah it was a way yeah. more like intense reveal because she's yeah. like in her car by herself reading it yeah and then she goes into her friends and she's like I'm fucking Michael Myers sister and she has that freak out and that's like it's a great scene but yeah, right. yeah like so like that see like if it's handled appropriately I think it's interesting but I think for the grand scheme of the story it's not the best move it's very anticlimactic in this one Mm-hmm. Right, the nurse it's is just, like, it's "You just don't conversation know." Conversation between <laughs> between yeah. Jimmy and her. It's like, wait, what? What? <laughs> like, it just goes by so quick. Like, did you just say that? It's it's very underwhelming. Mm. Mm-hmm. Well, I loved it. I loved the whole because it just made it feel like I thought like doing making that choice made it feel like a a two parter. It's like I mean, right. even, even there's, though there's that big and this is the other thing in the second one. Yeah, it's like yeah, you're building it this is the, the like third act. The first one. It ad, yeah, it recontextualizes the way you see the Personally, first one. Personally, I'm okay you're like, with oh, this is the motive siblings. for like, like how I'm, this works, and it's like yeah. boom, and then it caps off at the end of it. Boom, right. he's dead, and like, and the doctor's dead, and that's the end. As of a the one-two story. punch, yeah, that's the whole story that's right there. But also should have ended because it did feel because that's the thing. The first one does have does not have an ending. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, it doesn't have an ending, so part two does, and so that is the conclusion of the Halloween saga. It all happens on one night. It is interesting now, you know, to go back and, and look at the the first one as like, so what if they weren't related? But yeah. right. it, it's it's somehow less satisfying, at least to me, that way. It's like it all makes more sense. Yeah. And I know it what makes, you're saying. It's it's a, it's more scary if it yeah. doesn't make sense. It's a crazy. It's a, it, it makes whatever. sense and it works for me. But like I said, it's just there's no big reveal. It's just a casual conversation. Mm-hmm. You know, I needed In more a car. See, I thought that what well no, to the, the doctor. I like oh, don't, Jesus. Don't you realize what he's doing here? He killed one sister but 15 not, years ago. Now he's back to kill the, the other. It's, it's like played bam. off. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's the moment. She doesn't realize that she's no, his sister. No, because maybe well, no, we don't. She get never finds out in this movie. Right. right. No, but it doesn't feel like a dun 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 moment. You no, know I what I mean? It. it was oh, played no, way more it. for no, drama and Rob Zombie's Halloween. Yes. I think. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Oh yeah. no, I like. I like this version of. I like mm-hmm. that part two mm-hmm. version of it because mm-hmm. it's a good way to discover something. Mm-hmm. But I like this version better. Yeah. I like. I like that, especially the way Loomis reacts to it. Um, and also because we get him taking over the marshal in the car. And it's like, what do you fellas do? Fire a warning shot? Yeah. The problem is it shrinks the scope of the story so much to make it like it's, oh, it's only contained within this family. Like that yeah, really that's limits the story. It's your... this guy who's trying to kill his family right, for but, whatever psycho reason he's doing. Right. But like when you when you add that element that he's only out to kill his sisters, that shrinks the scope of your story that you can tell then on forward, you know. Well, well, yeah. once well, well, well gone, you're but that's it. To. Yeah. But you're not supposed to go on. Yeah. Bes- before right, that, but, but they were tying it. It still off. happened. Yeah. Right. Well, that's on. I think that's on the filmmakers going forward. They're just like, well, let's continue this story. Just like, ah, or, or all right. Yeah. Because well, how about she they, had a kid. They're it's limited been time. because they decided to take yeah. that element and keep going with it. I think it works very well. Yeah. So one, the first two, two, right? Part one, part two, and done. Then, we, then because we've decided to go with it, which you know you can blame on. Uh, earlier movies for making that decision. 
Mm -hmm. um, but it, yeah, they will limit themselves if they decide to take that thread and go with it. Mm -hmm. um, I personally think uh, I love where they went with it. Um, with the Jamie Lloyd Yeah, I'm, I'm right perfectly fine with that. Those I'm are, fine with it until they're, four. They're very good movies. After four, I'm not. Yeah, I know. Not, but somehow yeah. four, uh, like I actually dug that movie. Yeah, me yeah. too. Yeah. Like, four is good. really good movie. Yeah, it's like, wow, they actually did kind of pull this off. I mean, it's yeah. a step down. It has a good down, ending, too. But it's, it's really like, yeah. ending. It does have a good ending. It works. Mm -hmm. I think five is a good ending, too, but we'll talk about that But five next year. gets so far away from the main thread of what sure, these movies it adds, are. Yeah, so it's like, it we don't know so what to do anymore. elements to yeah. it. Like, bizarre. Bizarre, yeah. yeah. It's bizarre. Yeah. Indeed. But Which is why a lot of people used to call it the worst of them. And then they made six. six. And then everyone said, oh, just they kidding. Made seven. Right. Yeah. yeah. Then they made, yeah. How dare you talk about seven that way? Wait, which one's seven? H2O. 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 It's right. revisited. It's you. not that bad. I know. I, I like I said the last good. in the 2018. Mm -hmm. Well, you heard us talk about it. We I, ranked like, all of our movies. I thought that one was too. better after uh, 2018 mm -hmm. came out. Yeah. Um. So the thing that this movie does. I mean, uh, also I noticed uh, the opening credits in the first movie was Donald Pleasance and Jamie Lee Curtis in. This mm -hmm. one is Jamie Lee Curtis. And Donald Pleasance in because she became a scream queen in she the did. in mm -hmm. the time in between this uh, she had done prom night and Terry Train and was about to go on to do a Trading Places and escape the horror ghetto. Where was uh, Road Games? Where, where was oh, Road, Road Games, Games was because yeah. uh, well, maybe that was the next year. Was that eighty two? I think it was close. It was eighty one or eighty two. Those are the the Jamie Lee Curtis. Uh, right. Yeah. I want to because uh, uh, Shep, uh, Screen Factor is releasing it's this. A, I remember that being Road Games is eighty one, right? It's 81. But yep. I want to like uh, I just recently her. learned about this movie. I'm just like it's got Jamie Lee Curtis, Stacy Keach. Yeah. And it's like a, a road serial killer yeah. or some shit. Like yeah. I want to watch this movie. I've it's, never seen this movie. Yeah, I saw that. It sounds good. Around the same time I saw Halloween too. It's yeah. like it was pretty good. This sounds pretty good. I don't know if it holds up, but I remember we it, might find out. Colin. Yeah, I remember it being pretty decent. <laughs> Um, and there's things about that movie I remember to this day, but um, so so she's in it and she gets star billing. Yeah, but probably of those, what do we even mention? Three or four movies that she was in. This one, she has the least amount of shit to do. Really? She yeah. she's laying down for most. Yeah, she has a mm -hmm. not a lot to do no. at all. Yeah, because she's recovering from the injuries sustained in the right. last movie. And she doesn't provide out. any kind of dramatic drive. No, and people are doing stuff around her, but she has nothing to do and really nothing to say. And she's wearing a pretty bad wig. She maybe she had true. done. Had she shot trading places? At this point, where she had the short hair, mm -hmm. I don't oh, I know. Thought, Maybe I thought, not. I thought training places was, was later. Three, I think it was You're later. Right. But she did have shorter, well, way shorter hair. Perfect with John Travolta. That was that was later. Four. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Love letters. She was, definitely yeah. has different hair, perfect. so she had to wear a wig. Mm -hmm. For this movie, yeah. Um. So. So she has really nothing to do. This is your star now, right? Um, nothing to do until the last like. What ten minutes? Yeah, Even but then those it last goes ten so minutes. slow. Yeah, it's like right. ten minutes. But the last ten minutes, when uh, after Michael Myers kills Jill, right, the sticks her in the back yeah. with the, the grabs her, grabs her in the back and lifts her up. Yeah, according to this version, she falls to the ground and that music kicks in and it's like this yeah. is like and this is I guess the Bum. thing about a lot of uh, Bum slasher Bum. movies. There's a lot of like the first hour. Is people wandering off and alone? Hello, hello. Yeah. How did I know you were going to do that? Hello, <laughs> Mr. Because Garrett. That's, that's always Mr. what they Garrett. do. Mr. They're Garrett, are you in this like, room? Searching in the dark for someone to help them. Hello. Yeah. Um, but that's when the movie actually starts and kicks yeah. into gear, and from then on, it's like you know, suspense. I mean, helped out by that great score this time, Should've performed by Alan Howard. His first intro, his introduction to the series, because he went on, he did two, three, four, five, six, is is the score he did for the Halloween series. Because so this is his first one, but he kept with it and kept going. Yeah, all, so John that. Carpenter actually did sit this one out. Yeah. Uh, even though it says music by John Carpenter in association with, with Alan Howarth. <laughs> it's mostly Howarth Alan is Howarth. just playing the themes from yeah. John Carpenter, yes. but they're they're better orchestra or whatever. The instrumentation on the 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 I, I don't know. I thought so. No, I will, I, the, the, the theme sounds better the in this version I will, than it yeah. does in the original I will say movie. when that music started, like it felt better. Mm -hmm. You know, it is a, got a better it just, synthesizer. It just felt better. It like is. the, I mean, you can't discount the classic 
first version score of this. Yeah, but, the piano version or whatever. Right, but this is, like, it's a good version of it. I mm-hmm. really like this score. I think score. this is the actualized Halloween score. I think so. Yeah. Throughout the movie, I think it is, because of the uh, the singers and just uh, the um, the chase it, music done. Yeah. Done on, like, this, I think it's all a lot Should we specify that we're not talking about the theme? Oh, I would I would say the theme in this well, no, I like the better theme, the than the original. The theme. Uh, I don't know if I like it better. I don't like it. Better. I don't like I, it. I, I'm talking. I'm talking about just like the score, oh. like the kick throughout yeah, the, the movie. Scene, yeah, yeah. Like, oh. no, yeah. I, don't, I don't like no, it better. The, the but theme. I, like it a I lot. don't like. I don't. I don't like the theme, like the theme oh, in this like one. Theme? No, it oh. feels like a remixed feels, version yeah. of the original. And I don't it really does. I like it. No, I don't. I don't like it better than the original, but I like it. I think it's really good. It feels off. No, I like this. Sounds like I like the little change to it. I like it. It feels like some. Kid in his room on his Casio trying to do the original thing. Yeah, yeah. Like it just I'm not feels a fan. Weird. That kid does it well. Oh wow! I, I, it feels I like, like a rave version of the theme. <laughs> no, that was the Halloween <laughs> Four theme. That's true. When that he gets is up true. into the yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But no, I yeah. I was like, we need to we need to separate which one we're talking about here because yeah, I do not like the theme. I like the score later on when it, the, the movie actually good. kicks yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. I do like that. Did you guys feel like you could the, tell a the difference? The shape walks. Yes. Again, I yes. think. It was do you feel like you could tell a difference in who was playing Michael Myers? Yes. I know. I, I mean, yeah. I know oh, I can yeah. tell a difference. Right but away. Oh, yeah. I was right like, ah, that, yep, that's Dick he Warlock. He carries himself <laughs> yeah. different. Dick yeah. Warlock, by the way, inductee yeah. into the Saturday Night Freak Show Hall of Fame for this Woo! movie. Hold on a second. He was in Halloween 3. That's right. He yep. played one of the robot assassins in Halloween 3. And uh, he was also uh, in The Rocketeer as an FBI agent. Thank you, uh, MF Mad, for Awesome. The update. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Oh, also, keeper. Thank you. Uh, sir and or ma'am. Jeffrey Kramer, we spoke of earlier, the dentist. Uh, not only was he in Halloween 2. Wait, we did do Clue on this show. Yeah. You yeah. Oh, yeah. Clue. That's, That's right. true. And yeah. The Burbs, where he was a voiceover oh, okay. actor. Nice, uh, nice. There you go. We, Jeffrey Kramer. What? Uncredited voice voiceover. In the burps? He's in the credits when it, for the when, burps. When uh, Tom Hanks is watching TV, I think there's a voiceover. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Is he a voice on Jeopardy? <laughs> so maybe that's no. an unofficial. All right. Yeah. That's, that's a hallway. Yeah. That's, a, that's a hallway. Does it seem like Dick Warlock has a really short stride to you guys? Like he takes really small steps in comparison to He's Nick a, Castle? He feels like a smaller man. He well, he feels like a thinner guy and yeah. a taller, yeah. guy. lankier guy. Yeah, yeah. and so he, he has, walks with a stick up his butt. Yeah, yeah, right. yes, that's yeah. what it is. Yeah, exactly. his presence is much less menacing. Oh, yeah. yeah, he's got, yeah. definitely got a straighter back. Yeah, in, in yeah. being Michael. Holmes, I felt yes. like Nick Castle took bigger strides. You know, like that. Also, we're, we're also exposed to like. Um, uh, his walk because he has hallways he has to walk down in this movie and stairs we don't we don't get like that. three times down the stairs in the original Halloween we don't get that like that's yeah. not so, that's not a way we viewed Michael before so it is definitely well different. no because Michael Myers is more front and center in this movie than he was in the first well in the TV cut he's all over the fucking place yeah. which I don't like about this random version. scenes of him just doing whatever right, just yeah everywhere. where they just they're grabbing just from the they're, movie. they're grabbing I mean in yeah they're just grabbing shots from later in the movie and repeating them. They're also showing outtakes of him opening doors and shit like that, that it's like, what? Um, yeah. Yeah, that but was weird. The TV version puts him everywhere. Uh, but where the first movie, they tried to keep him, basically, you never really, like, as the first movie progresses, you get, like, a closer look at, like, what he actually looks like. Mm. You're just seeing shoulders and... Right. You know, Head, uh, shoulders, waste and shots and all that stuff. Mind. And then eventually you get, you know, out of focus in the background. And eventually he becomes more central as the film goes on. And this one, it's like the whole fucking way through it. It's like dudes yeah, walking. Like, we hey, know what he looks him. like. Just have him walking around. All yeah. And a scalpel is much less menacing than a butcher knife. Than a giant yeah, uh, it's- cutting knife. It's really not menacing at all. No, no, no. The the blade's like not even an inch long on a what scalpel. That's what he's got. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. That's what he's got. It's it's specifically yeah. made to make small incisions. Yeah, you're not getting stabbed, you're getting punctured. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Big difference. Cut, getting right. a small Big slit difference. to access for yes. surgery. Right. Yeah. I don't yeah. think uh, uh Dr. Loomis should have fallen down after getting stabbed with a scalpel. No, no. no. Mm. Whoop. No, yeah. Well, maybe puncture him just in the right. Uh, maybe organ. got his lung. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Right. right. I mean, right. stomach got a lung. Can, yeah. I, can we yep. just say that the uh, the scalpel puncture in Young Frankenstein was worse than in this movie? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh for mm-hmm. sure. Right. Yes. For sure. That's that was a pretty bad one. Yeah. Yes. That was pretty good. 
one of the best jokes in that movie. I love that movie. It's my <laughs> it's favorite movie. movie. I know, I know. I like that one a lot now, too. Movie. And now I show it to people and they don't laugh at it at all. So I still laugh at it. I've seen it a thousand I know, times. But I still laugh. I know, but we saw it back when it was funny. It's still funny. Mm-hmm. Fuck you. I don't care. I yeah. believe that, too, but uh, tell the kids. Um, the kids. Well, the kids don't count. No, yeah. humor just changes with generation. That's all. Yeah, it's very true. It's still funny. None, none of Mel Brooks's movies survive very. I don't well think so. I think generation. Mel Brooks. Well, honestly, go by the wayside, mo- most you know, comedy movies don't age very well. They don't. Yeah, no. it's yeah. just that's just comedy in general. Just doesn't that's age why well. you shouldn't watch them. You should just watch horror movies. Disagree. Well, Completely disagree. Well, I, mean, I mean, horror movies hold up better. Movies, they, they do hold up better. Okay, I'm going to go yeah. with hold up better. Yeah. I heard that from, I heard Neko. That's three, three on. Yeah. Horror hold movies up hold up better. Than comedies? Yeah. I'll They're way better. Four. Comedies mm-hmm. expire super quickly. Definitely. True. Uh, the Hangover? Watching, yeah. Not funny watching, anymore. I was watching Bullseye with Michael Caine today with him trying to do an American accent and <laughs> that shit doesn't hold up at all. Mm-hmm. Nobody's funny. Roger Moore's in that movie. <laughs> Everyone's trying to be funny. It's bad. It's funny in a bad way, but it's bad. I'm not making that statement. You can stop okay, looking at me. Damn it. I'm not <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to say either one will hold All up right. better because okay. I can come up with examples of both. I'm in spectrum. Yeah. Okay. Well, in that case, then we're left with Halloween 2. Mm. Um, we get to the end. Where, uh, is, there, is there anything changing in the cuts between the first one and the second one? Um, aside from we don't get to see bleeding eyes in this movie? You do right before the explosion, right though. Before the right explosion. Which is like a huge Literally. continuity. Continuity is not a thing in no, this movie. No, it doesn't care. exist they in this care. movie. Yes. But no, yeah, no. I was like, there was no bleeding eyes up until right before the explosion. And then all of a sudden he's got bleeding eyes. Yep. But it's Nobody strange cares. that it has it has narrative continuity as far as, you know, putting those scenes back that, uh, you know, when characters are talking amongst themselves and explaining why they're right. going somewhere and why they're doing whatever they're doing. But it has this, I mean, it, it just visually... Mr. Garrett goes down to the basement. <laughs> yes. And then he's Love seen it. looking at a, a a lock and then it cuts back to like he's nowhere near the lock door. You're yeah. like, what the fuck? But is Holly that because was audibly uh, <laughs> aghast at this scene? I know they're I just this. making they really I, do I make ask, shit I heard up. I would, I'm like, no, Holly, are you though. choking? What is going on behind me? Are you okay? Yeah. I get it, though, because I don't have any patience for continuity errors. Because like, to me, I that's mean, like basic filmmaking. That's true. You know? That's like, the problem with this version, then. I right, mean, you're yes. going to have a... I mean, this you're going to have a hard time. If you if continuity errors are a problem... Oh, yeah, you this will not like this it. version. No. It's <laughs> riddled all. with them. Just and like, repeated what? shots. See, and, he's not... It's a, Because you can tell when they have... They've taken a shot, they've cut it, and all they've done is separate the shots with a different shot in between. So you know the exact moment where it cut and the exact moment where it came back to that shot and it's like one frame off. And you can sense that in the movie, which is what they did in this movie. Right. Here's the thing with continuity errors. It's either laziness or it's uh, an insult. Like they think we won't notice or they just don't care. Like yeah. and so it, It's good enough. Uh, those are TV bad qualities enough. to have in a movie. To be fair, in the film's defense, when I was 11 years old or whatever the fuck when I saw this on TV, the fact that Jimmy falls into a gig- gigantic pool mm. of blood and has a woman like dead lying next to him on a gurney didn't even register. Mm. I saw the thing explode and he fell down and, you know, that was, I mean, you know, true. Jimmy just, does fall because of an explosion. Yeah. In this movie and the, the version it of this shook movie, it, it he, shook it so much. Yeah. He wanders around through the hospital for a goddamn half hour and the explosion knocks him on his ass in a puddle of blood as an <laughs> unexperienced, uh, you know, and again, as a child film watcher, the continuity Okay, it worked. So, right. so yeah, you're, it so you're saying that this movie is for children. I <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, obviously, it, right? I mean, I mean, right? it's made I mean that, is, that is the yeah. literal. That is the literal editing of this yeah, movie yeah. to make it palatable. For That's TV. what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys remember? I think I've brought this up before in the freak show, but do you remember uh, that random period of time when CBS thought it'd be cool to show Dexter on it uh, yeah. on yeah, CBS yeah, after yeah. nine o'clock, <laughs> <laughs> and which it was a, like edited to ribbons? I'm like, this is an awesome. I, yeah. <laughs> I wonder what these episodes look. like. It was like edited to ribbons oh, still boy. because I mean Dexter's like premium cable, so it's really. But what graphic. did right. Deb? I mean, how did Deb express herself on CBS? Right. That's what did I'm they, saying. Did they cut her out completely? They had to have, right? They had to have. There's Deb just didn't exist. No, I think I watched the first. 
never seen the show, and I know Deb is just cursing up a storm. Yeah, the entire yeah. Thing. Fuck, fuck, never fuck, fuck, fuck. How could she be? In You've this? never watched Dexter? Yeah, never. Oh, oh it's so good. One of the so greatest great. television it's shows so ever made. Yeah, for you, like four seasons, and then it goes to shit. Um, I mean, it's like seasons? every other one. You know, every yeah, it's like every other season. Uh, is after good. the uh, after Trinity Killer, I heard don't watch. No, there's it. there's there's a couple seasons after Trinity that are good, but okay. Trinity is the peak. That's the thing. Yeah, you know what? Even even the bad stuff is still it's still worth watching. Yeah, all I know is I know how it ended, and I'm just. It is a bad ending. I'm as baffled as people who love that show. That's why, like, like, when people were bitching about the Game of Thrones ending, I was like, like, you you don't know bad endings. (laughs) You don't know bad endings, because Dexter had probably the worst ending. I was confused. I'm like, what is he doing? Yeah. Yeah. He's a a lumberjack now? Yeah. He's got a beard? It's bad. But, uh, but yeah, CBS thought that that would be cool to air that at, like, 9 o'clock. Well, they didn't think it would be cool. They they were forced into it because of a writer's strike, and they didn't have anything else to do, so they're like, we own Showtime. Right, CBS And it's a big hit over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so let's give this a shot. Yeah, he, must like, have, he must have just CBS, not had a sister. <laughs> you, like the idea of right. taking a serial killer protagonist and putting it on network oh. television. <laughs> yeah. Like not there's good. a yeah. where it's seen by like eight million people to like, you know, whatever, twenty million yeah. is a big uh you know, just yeah, you're exposing yourself to, to people who I'm are like, curious. Just I kinda aghast. wanna watch an episode to see what it's like though, you know? <laughs> like I'm curious. Because there's like it's Report not just back. the violence, there's so much nudity and swearing on that show. Yeah. Like like it's it's to the it, bone. Yeah, it's Cut like a hard bone. R in every way. So uh, I'm oh, really curious. This is curious. the thinking that brought Halloween 2 to yeah. our show yeah. tonight. And Very uh, true. it's censored it's like... four by three uh four by three. television yes. version. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which we watched. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we did. All right, should we tell you what we thought of it? Sure. Well, you know what? We have a very uh full mailbag. Oh, mm-hmm. do we? Oh yeah. Let's get to it. All right. Well, then, we uh, first of all, we're going to have said. to summon our uh, mailman in order to bring us our mail, said mailbag. So, Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Well, thank you, Igor. He's got bleeding eyes. Oh, he's, but he gets that, like, that's it's just like how his tears come that's, out, right? That's month to month. Like yeah. that's just how he's doing. <laughs> I think, it. That, I think that's just his allergies. I think so. Right? Yeah. <laughs> happens to, me, to being Igor, held in the basement. To me too. <laughs> I usually, yeah, you know, the hay fever. Mm-hmm. Well, Bleeding from the eyes. Oh, why don't we tell the good folks at home who have stuck with us this far how they can get a hold of us on Facebook? Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter at Sat Freak Show. By email Saturday Night Freak Show Yahoo.com. or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. When we announced on the said uh, social medias that we were watching the TV cut of Halloween 2, Grant <laughs> Parrish wrote in and said, but why? But why? An you excellent know, question. Valid yeah. question. Sure. Yeah. sure. Brent Zemecki said, oh my God, that's brilliant. Is it? I also don't know what he means by that. Is he real? It might be sarcasm. Are you brilliant? I, is yeah, it sarcasm? Again, I, uh, is the yeah. movie brilliant? I don't know. You don't know. I'm very confused by that reaction. Yeah, I'm gonna take I think, it. I think he means that pick is brilliant. Honestly, I think so. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna go with that. That me picking the TV cut of this is brilliant. All right. That's what I'm. Picking. Okay. That. Oh. <laughs> of course, you're gonna think that. Okay. okay. <laughs> you just said it though. You agreed. No, I think that's what he's saying. I right. don't agree with it. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. But that is what he's saying. Okay. Well, a refund theater writes in and says, "Never watched it, but I have it." Which means they have the uh, the shell right, factory the back set. Uh, well, the big the big set. Not the smaller you big set that's now obsolete because you need more movies to put obsolete. in it. It's not obsolete. This is the only movies you need to keep. If really, you need to keep Halloween Six. That's the one you need to keep. Yeah. So that collection is still the collection, but it's not a complete collection anymore. Doesn't matter. It's There's still no the collection right you need. No, no, it's it's but not a complete start collection. There and then build build forward. Yeah, for you the build second, from that. But that's they're going to release a new box set with all the new ones. In no, it. they won't. Yeah, they won't. Um, you, you know, we had this conversation. We before. did. Yeah, I know. This, <laughs> there's a whole lot of deja vu. Right. <laughs> uh, B movie poster vault writes in and says, "I question Sean's judgment on this one. You the shouldn't. network version of Halloween Two. Look, just slap Sean around the head for me. I missed this comment." Oh Halloween 2 <laughs> is a tedious, mean-spirited piece of crap even before you let the censors get their hands on it. Wow. I'd right. rather listen to the advertising jingle from Halloween 3 on repeat. Six more days till Halloween. Right. Halloween. This is a person who doesn't like Halloween 2 in general, yeah. which is... 
I'm offended. Oh, what? Yeah. Offended. I, uh, offended. Jesus, offended. I, I admire offended their passion. That, I, I do. I, I hey, admire their passion. Be passionate. I agree. But, you know. <laughs> well, that's, Travis that's Legler <laughs> says, I love Sean. If I was a part of the freak show, he would be my partner in crime. This is all I need. I'm excited to hear this podcast. This is all I need. This has fueled me for the next year oh, of oh, bad no. picks that I will bring to this show. Oh, yeah, because uh, apparently yeah. Travis Travis recommended Carnosaur and yeah. Sean did it. So it's not because so he's he got his believes back. in this pick. It's because you picked Carnosaur. He said no, he has his back because of because of Carnosaur. Of Carnosaur. No, so this has not nothing to do with Halloween said, too. Nothing. That's what it, that is what his comment said. Yeah, sir, you should be you ashamed. Comment, Carnosaur, ashamed. He's got your back. He has nothing to do with he Halloween said he too. Loves me. It has nothing to do with <laughs> Halloween too. <laughs> that's Nick, all I need. Well, Nick Siebel writes in and he says, "I love this franchise and I absolutely love this film. Probably the best opening ten minutes in a horror movie sequel ever." Oh wait. Oh, 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 are you talking about the TV That's version? That's what I was like, no. which yeah. one is he talking about? He's horror? talking about the theatrical version. Yeah, yeah I, I know he is. Yeah. I know. Guarantee it. He says, every time I watch Halloween 1978, I have to watch Halloween 2. The movies connect so well. I hate that Halloween 2018 acts like Halloween 2 1982 didn't even exist. Danny McBride. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think you're supposed to Danny McBride. Like right. Newman. Yeah. Newman, yeah. yeah. Newman, yeah. yeah. Um, Michael Whitaker says, is the TV version anything like the network TV version of Christine, which is surprisingly kid friendly? It's always just cut cutting away from to reaction shots of people getting killed in the car, no blood. And my kids yeah. actually really seem to like it's it. A, <laughs> that's it's awesome. always kid friendly. That's the point. That's yeah. True. yeah. That's why TV versions exist. Yeah. yeah. Uh Novato Judoka writes in and says, uh, I'm gutted. I was hoping for H2O, but this could be interesting considering how much they have to cut for TV and then add back to pad for time. First time I ever saw Cobra was on TV and I had uh, scenes I had never seen again. That's why or I've never seen again. Not even on the new Blu-ray. Oh, wow. Wait, didn't uh, closer, you, lost did you do time, H2O? Huh? No, no, we have but not. Done. It feels like we have. I was, it feels yeah. like we've done every single. I was fucking thinking movie you guys did it franchise. before Michaela. Thank and I you, got Mr. Here. New Jersey, yeah. for mentioning <laughs> H2O. Uh, Maybe it will come soon. Josh Zemer writes in and says, "Hey everyone, I'm so very eager to hear why Sean chose the TV <laughs> version, but Sorry. I remember thinking it did a better job of setting up more some of the characters than the theatrical one. This is definitely one of my favorite slashers. I think it's very worthy of a follow up to the original." And also adjusting the 80s demand for more gore, I think it has a good atmospheric, great score. And it's a great cinematography. It's still creepy. To this day, the death of the girl home alone in the beginning makes me jump. And the scene with Janet's death also makes is very creepy, too. Oh, too bad we didn't see either of those yeah. scenes in the TV <laughs> yeah. cut. But he wants you to know that Pickles, his dog, joined <gasps> oh, us for this Pickles. one. And got lots of head Pickles tilts. Is back. Pickles! Oh, Pickles From has a little music. pumpkin. He's a little pumpkin. Oh, uh, in a costume? Is Pickles oh, wearing a little Pickles. costume? Oh, uh, pumpkin. I think Pickles is like laying down in a blanket or something. Uh, I think he's yeah. got a little but, sweater but on. But Pickles has got a pumpkin. Yeah, it's adorable. for me. Um, so, about our episode about the fun house. This was last week, since so you're listening to this. Jim Otto writes in and says, I was probably 14 or 15 when I first saw the fun house, and I absolutely loved it. It's another one that has a soft spot in my heart. About our episode on Phantasm, Karate Warrior 2 writes in and says, I watched this movie because it was in the VHS eBay hall. I scored. I still don't know what the fuck happened in this movie <laughs> to this day. Yeah. I mean, Reasonable. that's kind of the experience of the movie. Reasonable. Yeah. It says like, uh, P.S. This is not feedback. Uh, Nick Siebel yeah. writes in again and says, Phantasm was great. But have you seen Phantasm 2? It's even Better. One of the best horror sequels and underrated 80s gem. Practical effects done by Greg Nicotero and K&B. Iconic theme and oh, you can't forget the quad-barreled shotgun. I, I mean, need to watch part two. I feel like I've been talked into part two now. I, I think we need. I think I've heard enough good two. feedback to watch, part, watch two part two now. Yeah. Let's all come over for the Halloween Hoot Nanny yeah. and then watch part two. Mm-hmm. All right. Rusty Ryan writes in and says, uh, exceptional episode on Phantasm. I love the insights and comments. I was a senior in high school and I saw it the opening weekend at my favorite local drive-in in South Texas. It did not make much sense at the time, but that could be attributed to the numerous distraction we indulged in, but I still loved it. I was especially interested in the whole Hemikuda tangent. I'm a child of the 60s and 70s, so I grew up with all those muscle power movies, including Bullet, 
Vanishing Point, mm. Two Lane Blacktop, nice. Eat My Dust, and Dirty Larry, Crazy Mary. Crazy Those Mary. are all great yep. titles. Wow, nice. great titles. All great movies. titles. I've seen great titles, everything great but Eat My Dust, I think. But I never once considered that Plymouth car is part of those icons, but it totally is. It's a good that car. that me, me saying prove that there is a sexier car really stirred up some I fucking know, conversations. Really so. Because Jacob Laws is like, what about the Aston Martin DB5 from Goldfinger? And I believe it was also in Skyfall. I think Wouldn't he might be right. I think he might be right. Time? Yeah. I, I think he might I, be right No, I remember that. seeing Skyfall in the theater when and they showed like, that damn. car. I got chills yeah. when I saw that car. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to beat an Aston Martin. Yeah, you know? it's true. Well, Andrew John definitely beats that, a DeLorean. Uh, it does. Ooh. Well, like I said, oh, that's, I, that's, hey, uh, I Travis said, was. Uh, oh, that's I said a DeLorean words, is cool, not sexy. Yeah, yeah, there's a difference. I agree. We all expressed yeah. very cool. One yeah. of the yeah. coolest. Very cool. Sexy. Cool and sexy, sexy are different. No. Yeah. Very different. All right. Yeah. I'm going to stick with it. I love that he posted a lot about it. I had never cool. seen a red DeLorean I'd never before. Seen it either, very, which yeah. was very yeah, cool. Yeah, that was cool. I love that he posted a lot about it. Yeah, See, but just you're but missing make, out on this. Making not, a DeLorean red doesn't make it sexy. No, you got to follow the Saturday Night Freak Show on, on to know Facebook, what we're talking about. Yes, we're talking yeah. about. yes, yes you, you do. Uh, Andrew John says Reggie from Phantasm was one of my favorite characters ever. Um, He's great. He says it's another great episode. I'm glad everybody loves it like I do. When I lived in my apartment, I'd always have Phantasm Fests. Those are both with the P P H. Yeah. Where we watch all the films. Not everyone was enth- as as enthusiastic about them as I was. But when we did a fest that ended <laughs> with the are. debut of Ravager, even that was one I, even I could not get on board with. Phantasm is like it's like a secret code. When you find out someone else knows it, Phantasm. you're like immediately bonded like, with them. You're like, oh shit, you know about that too? Yeah, yeah. It's, well, it's a good bond. Simon good Carter uh, writes in about Phantasm. Says Don Coscarelli is one of the cinema's greatest forgotten geniuses. Don't get me wrong, his fan base is hardcore. It's just that he deserved a larger fan base. And good for you guys for covering some of his works. Mm. Yeah, we yeah. try. He deserves it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would so say so. Can I pose a question to you guys before we go around? Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, as we are going around doing our wrap ups, I would like everyone to mention a moment of TV editing or censorship in a movie they saw that was either hilarious or off putting. Oh, I, so if you saw know. like a TV edit of a movie, I've I've got a couple. You, know if you've ever seen down. a movie that you've seen like a bunch or that you know is R rated and you saw it on TV and they edited it around something or they did really hilarious like dubbing that was like, wow, that's really bad. God damn it. <laughs> if I didn't have the one, I would say this should have been mentioned earlier, but yeah. I have the one. So. Okay. Okay. Anyways. Well, this is a good question. Yeah. Because there's that's what this movie is. Yeah. You know? Very much. Uh, amazing Grace, come show me your face. <laughs> yeah. She's full of sugar. Cry. <laughs> yeah. Full of sugar. Full of sugar. Yeah. <laughs> that was very different in the actual movie. Yeah, yes. but there's some of them very. where I can't remember if it was Lethal Weapon or Die Hard where they had yes. uh, like they couldn't get like Bruce Willis was just like, no, I'm not going to do it. Mm-hmm. So it's just some do dude who yeah, yeah. doesn't even have doesn't even sound like Bruce Willis, mm-hmm. you know, in there with the yippee ki whatever. Mr. Falcon. Well, Mr. that was. Gonna be my Mr. Thing, Falcon. But thanks, Colin. There you go. Maybe okay. okay. Mr. Falcon. <laughs> yeah. That's, Mother that's Truckers. So random. Mother Truckers. Yeah, Mother Truckers is always a good. Mother one. Truckers would have made way more sense than Mr. Falcon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mr. Falcon. Mother Humpers. <laughs> Mother. Oh, that was what uh, they actually <laughs> used in Tremors, right? Mother Humpers. Oh yeah, yeah I should go because back it, the like, R-rated for... version of it would have been Motherfuckers. Yeah. Right, because they did a lot of that in, in the uh, the Tremors TV cut. Oh, I should probably remember. Some. That's in the PG thirteen theatrical I, cut. They I think dubbed so. out all the fucks. They did because in the uh, mine would have to be like when he's uh, Kevin Bacon is screaming at the at the tremor who ran through the wall. He's like he's supposed to be like fuck you. Instead he goes screw you, and it doesn't match up at all, <laughs> yeah. which is pretty great. That's the one I always. We're remember. never gonna get the R rated tremors. No, Mm-mm. I mean the fuck you's in the regular tremors. Is it? Oh, you did say. Oh, the TV hey, version. Fuck. Sorry. Are we going around the table on this? That was what was happening, or that was that a well, rhetorical? Well, right, I gave mine. I, gave yeah, I was like, I don't. I'll mine. say mine. Um, uh, in Kill Bill, uh, I don't know which one it was, um, because I've never actually seen them in full either one. But uh, uh my name is Buck, and I like to party, yeah. <laughs> and I drive the party wagon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's pretty that's great. Fun. They even have it like photoshopped party wagon onto the car. <laughs> it's fantastic. That's well, I've never, I've never yeah. seen it, but I do know that Scarface. Mm-hmm. Did air on network television. Oh my yes, god! It did. Oh did. my god! How, yeah, that's gonna be like a thirty-minute <laughs> movie, right? Yeah. So oh I don't know what they did, but mm-hmm. it must be amazing. 
Um, okay, well, I guess that means we're going to go around the room and tell you if we recommend or not what we thought of Halloween 2. Colin! Colin? You, right there? Yes, yeah, Sean. What did you think uh, about the TV cut of Halloween 2? Oh, the TV cut of the Halloween 2. The TV cut, 2. specifically. Well, no, you don't want to watch that. Uh, there's no. <laughs> re- the only- oh, that's quick. All right, yeah. Holly. Holly uh, because, because, I mean, Holly what too. we're talking about here when I intro the show is that this is the super nerd episode because yep. the only people who would have. Well, I mean, A, I hope that you got some enjoyment out of this because I, I, you've I heard so everyone else. You they all talk about Halloween, too. We're going to talk about the, the TV cut of Halloween, too. This pre- provides it's you Colin- new insight into the film that you won't get from those other second rate podcasts. It's easy to talk about Halloween too. It's hard to talk about the TV cut of Halloween. It sure is Sean, (laughs) but I think we did a good job tonight. Yeah. Um, it has a great poster. I kind of like that second only to the first one. I mean, that's a pretty good, that's good. Uh, More of the night. Yeah. I I think I've always said, uh, at least I think because Halloween two was the first, um, Halloween movie that I was exposed to. And I really like the, the, once the movie gets going, with mm-hmm. that, uh, you know, the, the theme, the whatever, the shape walks again, shape walks theme. Um, I've always found actually Halloween 2 probably to be the movie to go to if I'm going to watch a Halloween movie. I like watching Halloween 2 over Halloween 1. Yeah. Now, I know that sounds yes. like heresy. Halloween but, but is a much Halloween better movie. So much. I think that's it. it better, um, ap- better atmosphere. So yeah, this one has a yeah. better atmosphere yeah. than Halloween one. And it feels like a John Carpenter movie in some ways. I mean, because I Dean think it's Cundy, because of Dean Cundy. Yeah. yeah uh, the cinematography is similar enough that it feels like a logical, like it feels like it takes place in the world of the first movie. Yes. Um, which I, I appreciate. None of the other ones have that feel like mm. this one feels very close to the first one. Um, I think actually the the only problem that I ever had was uh, there was one night I did a double feature of Halloween to Halloween two and then it was like oh segments not really good not when you put them right back to back but if you wait and watch it on its own right. it's like oh, this is a pretty good movie um, the TV version is fascinating only for the super nerd or, or I mean obviously if you're nostalgic. You know, like Sean and I are, like, this is the first version that we saw. Okay, yes. fine. Yeah, right. You can see it again. <laughs> but wait, is this a recommended version? No. The only reason it would be recommended is if you were a uh, hardcore film aficionado, not even aficionado, you want to be a film editor or you're interested in like uh, what the possible, because I mean, when a movie's put together, obviously you can have almost an infinite. A variety of ways, you know, like what was the decision for why they chose to cut right there? Why did they take this part out of the movie? Whatever happened to the reporter still frame that was in uh, we've just inserted into this movie. (laughs) That's actually the thing I remember from the novelization. The reporter that overhears Dr. Loomis uh, saying I shot him six times. He just got up and walked away. She had like a whole thing. She did where she ended up driving somewhere and the shape was in the trunk of the car and he slit her throat. Yeah. Yeah. And I assume that they filmed that because apparently Carpenter so, cut a whole bunch of shit out of the movie. She remembers them filming it. And like she has. Yeah, it's in the script and then, yeah. or it's in the novelization, which is then in the script. And uh, Carpenter, I think by cutting her out, it left a logic hole for like how the shape knew that um, Lori was in the hospital. So he constructed and shot apparently that scene with um the nurse what was her name i can't remember karen Mm. bobbing for apples and all that stuff and the kid walking through the street so that's a john carpenter uh directed segment of the movie yes um so i mean i love halloween too right even if you watch halloween 2 the tv well i don't know it is a different movie it's a bastardized version of the original even though there are bits and pieces that now I'm aware of that they took out of the first movie, and it's like, damn it, I wish they would have left that in. Damn it, I would have, you know, that would explain so much if they would have left that in that I wouldn't have known about had this not existed. I don't know. You should watch <laughs> Halloween too. Um, if you're, uh, you got kids, you can probably show them Halloween to the TV cut because uh, it's minus all the gore and the nudity that uh, you know you don't want to. You don't it's want the super nerd see. cut. Or if you're a yeah, and a film editor, a picture you want to be a film editor or a movie director, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, I don't know. 
Halloween 2, yes. TV cut, no. Holly, what'd you think? There it is. You know how when you have a friend that you've known them a really long time and they go through... <laughs> Are you talking about Sean right they now? Go through, no, you're listen, about to tell listen, me I'm having a midlife listen, crisis? As listen far to me. As this <laughs> listen to my goddamn words. You have that friend... And you've known them a long time, and you watch them go through a really bad breakup, <laughs> and afterwards they're just like a shell of who they used to be. They're just not themselves anymore, and it's like sad to be around them, and it's just like draining your life away. And like Jesus. you could see it, you knew it was going to happen. You knew it was like you happen. couldn't stop it you from happening. Stop it. Yeah, there's yeah. nothing you can do. You're powerless. You just gotta watch it, and you just you just yeah. have to watch it happen. You can't cut it out of your life, but you want to. Yeah, that's this movie. <laughs> That's this movie, and it's okay to cut it out of your life. It's toxic. <laughs> That's it. No one should watch oh, this. Toxic. Well, hey, oh, the only way God. you can see it is if you go buy the specific disc. Right. Yeah, so it's yeah. easy to keep it out of your life. Yeah. yeah. True. It's you, okay. ha- you really have to find this movie to watch it. Yeah. I know. So <sighs> don't seek it out. <laughs> yeah. Don't do that to yourself. Sure. Take, uh, take care of yourself. You know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Take care of yourself. So, no, mm-hmm. no one should watch this. Michaela. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I think censorship and um, editing for the sake of censorship in, de- in general is very detrimental to moving ma- movie making, period. Um, so I'm never going to advocate for censorship of a movie. So no, don't watch the TV version. Watch <laughs> watch, watch the or- original version as it was intended to be seen. There's no reason to ever watch a TV version of anything, I don't think. Like, unless it's for the LOLs, unless you want to be like, let's see how fucking ridiculous. Like, try watching The Breakfast club on tv sometime oh, that was one of yeah. the that was a universal hilarious movie. yeah that was one of these mm. movies eat my yeah. socks eat my socks eat yes. my socks <laughs> yes yeah. it's there's whole giant scenes of that movie completely gone. cut out gone watch the breakfast club on tv it's, it's hilarious <laughs> um this to me it's hilarious i said for the lols not don't ever seek it out for no like, he's like i gotta go see it because i'm interested in cinema and the the alternate version universes that this presents when I say like watch it for the OLs, I mean if if you're at home on a Sunday folding laundry and it's already on TV, yeah. you know that's never going to be Halloween too, Sean. You're waving the case around in my face. No, it's, it's I'm never going to advocate for censorship. So no, don't watch Halloween too. Watch the original. There's no reason to watch a censored version of that, wait, Sean. Wait, wait, wait. He just said don't watch Halloween too. Don't don't watch the TV version of go. Halloween okay. too. Right. Watch the theatrical version. They know don't. what she's yeah. saying, right. Sean. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh my god. Um, Halloween 2. First of all, all right, well, Halloween 2 is one of the, uh, one of the, um, much better sequels to Halloween. Um, again, like you said, Colin, it's one of the ones that if I want to watch a Halloween movie, Halloween 2 is going to be the one I go to, the regular cut. Um, just for that atmosphere and everything. Um, Halloween 2, the TV version, I think is such a weird freaky anomaly that I uh, I would definitely recommend that you go watch it because it's such um, but there are I think there are reasons to watch it I think you have to be very familiar with the original Halloween 2 in order to appreciate this very whacked out cut down version of Halloween 2 so I I, I think that is where the recommendation comes in Uh, you have to know your Halloween 2 to enjoy the alternate universe that Halloween 2 the TV cut lives in. Um, I, I, like I said, this is a, a yearly thing, uh, a yearly watch for me just because of how weird and different the editing is on this movie. Um, I recommend it. I think it's funny. I think it's weird. Um, it's, uh, I mean, I, again, there's a reason it was included on this whole box set of Halloween movies. Um, I, I, I definitely recommend Halloween 2, the TV cut. It's so weird and so just like... And boring and pointless. That's fine. I, I'll still watch it every year. I mean, the, you could definitely get that from this movie. That's fine if you do. You don't have to watch it. But I, I recommend it. If you love Halloween like I do, I think there is something in this version of it that you will enjoy. Michaela? Thoughts? No, I'm going to disagree with that. Ah, yeah. 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 Ah, I no. watch Halloween too. Ah. Yeah. I, I watch the real version of yeah. this movie. Uh, yeah. Everyone does. Yeah. There's some weird shit in this movie that they do. I think you can get a laugh out of it. Again, it yeah, for the LOLs, but there's just some it's just some weird shit to watch the Did TV you know that it. somebody somewhere has put together the quote unquote producer's cut of Halloween 2, which Both? is not a producer, no, but it no, basically no. edits the all the scenes, I would the watch extended that. scenes into I would the watch theatrical that. cut. That may be the ultimate cut. 
I would watch that. Until we end up seeing that, you mentioned it. Now I have to bring it at some point when I find it. And, uh, until I see that, the Halloween Two TV cut is definitely, I think, worth a viewing. If you're a fan of this, is it your preferred version of Halloween Two? Is it my preferred is version? It? No. But yeah, you watch it every year. Interesting. Yeah. Do you watch the theatrical oh, of version? Course. Yeah. So you watch both versions every year. Yes. That's insane. <laughs> I don't think it is. <laughs> I don't think it is. I don't do that with you any watch movie one ever. On Halloween Eve, yeah. you know, you oh, watch no, the other no, one on Halloween Day. No, no, no. I yeah. within that month, I, I'm going through a variety of things, and I will watch Halloween to the uh, regular cut, which is I think fantastic. Uh, I will also watch Halloween to the TV cut, which I think is just fucking weird, but also like ah, there's some good shit Wait, in there. So you know what? I forgot that we didn't mention the the, the I will never scenes. I will never get through my own a review of this without being interrupted. Well, but yes, right. go ahead. Well, I mean. You, uh, the scenes from this movie, they were when they were filming this movie, they actually oh, right. shot scenes for Halloween for the TV version of, of Halloween. Halloween. Yes, they did. So there's three scenes in the original Halloween that aired on NBC true. that were shot during the production during of the production of this because, uh, as John Carpenter was shooting other shit, he shot stuff for the TV version of that. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Thank you for interrupting to give us that little box. You're welcome, Sean. For, thank you for bringing Halloween 2 it, to the Saturday Night Freak Show and I'm the saying, TV version. I love Halloween 2. I really like the Halloween 2 uh, TV cut because it's, it's fucking weird, so I recommend both of them. Uh, there it is. All right, so next week we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by... Hey, Holly. Hey, Sean. Uh, <laughs> what are we going to watch next week? Next week, we're going to watch Jennifer's Body. Ooh. Oh, shit. I was going to bring this. All right. Oh. All right. Okay. I nice. haven't seen this in a little, like, since it came out. So mm. we'll Holly, see. I have not seen this. Ooh. Right. Are so. you familiar with the works of Diablo Cody? Uh, Just, uh, you know, Ju Juno, Juno and. Uh, I mean, that's all you know. That's just <laughs> that's, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it starts and ends with just Juno. Just for Oscar winning uh, movie. Yeah. Yep. Just that. Yeah, so I've never uh, seen the United Body. States of Terror, is, the TV show. This is yep. good, though, because this is like. It's a big thing. Like they they've uh, promoted it enough where I'm just like I should go watch this movie. Mm -hmm. So, yay! All right, <laughs> Let's well, do it. Jennifer's body. next yes. week. Right, Jennifer's good. body on Saturday. I appreciate good it. Choice. I have to bring it. I've got a copy. Thank you. Uh, so until then, too, but thank you, <laughs> ladies and germs. The basement is going dark.